our next topic is cross products. All right, so we're going to do everything here in three dimensions. Okay, so the, the cross product, it's, as, as we're going to see, it's something that is inherently a three-dimensional construction. Um, you can sort of do it with two-dimensional vectors if you want to think of a two-dimensional vector as you know, two vectors that are in the xy plane, but that is sitting inside of three-dimensional space, so the third component, the z component, is just zero. Uh, but really, this is a three-dimensional thing. And in particular, uh, we can't go up a dimension. There's, there's no real notion of a four-dimensional cross product. Um, Luckily for us, that's not something we have to worry about. Uh, it is something that you might have to worry about if, for example, you're a physicist and you want to study something like, say, uh, relativity, um, which goes on in, say, a four-dimensional space-time, especially if you want to study, let's say, electrodynamics, uh, relativistic electrodynamics. I mean, actually, Electrodynamics is inherently relativistic, uh, but anyway, that's, that's another story. Um, there are ways to get around it, but they go way beyond what we do in this course. So let's just take two three-dimensional vectors and think about what we can do with them. Well, um, we know that one thing we can do is, just to remind you, is the dot product, which is a scalar. All right, and so we can do V dotted with w, and we get this v1, w1, v2, w2, plus um, oops, um, v3. Ah, making a mess. There. v3, w3. And, you know, we saw we can also write that as magnitude of v, magnitude of w, times cosine of theta. Um, and, and there are a lot of useful applications for the dot product. One of the things that we, we saw is that um, when uh, theta is equal to pi over 2, a right angle, the dot product of the two vectors will be 0, right? And we refer to this situation as these vectors being orthogonal. Now, one of the situations that, that comes up in a, in a lot of scenarios is you've got a pair of vectors, and you would like to have one more that's orthogonal to the two that you've already got, right? Um, and so the question is, is basically this. So assuming that, say, V and W here are not parallel, can we find some other vector? Um, let's call it, uh, oh, you know what, let's call it n. We'll, we'll see that n is a useful name moving forward. Um, so we want n dot v to be 0, and we want n dot w to be 0. And, and we don't want n to be the 0 vector. That's just cheating. Right? Um, so given two non-parallel vectors, can we find a third vector that is orthogonal to both of the ones we already have? Um, and so the sort of scenario that you want to think of here is you've got, say, let's say v and You've got w. And those two vectors, right, um, they, they kind of define a plane in a certain sense. I mean, once you choose a point that you want to anchor the vectors at, and we'll be talking about planes fairly soon. Um, and so you would like to find one vector which is orthogonal to both. And once you've found it, it will in, in particular be orthogonal to every vector that lies in that plane. Right? And so the, the normal vector, as we will call it, we're not there yet, but n, uh, that's why we're calling it n for normal, would be orthogonal to both, right? So this, this would be a right angle, 
and this would be a right angle. Um, the angle between V and W is not necessarily a right angle, although if we wanted orthogonal vectors in the plane, we could always use that uh, method of orthogonal decomposition that we talked about in the dot product section to kind of straighten those two vectors out and get a you know, uh, set of three mutually orthogonal vectors. Um, and there are a lot of situations in both mathematics and physics where having that set of three mutually orthogonal vectors is actually quite useful. Uh, in linear algebra, you would refer to that as a, an orthogonal set of vectors or an orthogonal basis if you have the right number. Um, and that's, that's an important topic in its own right. Okay? Now, in, once you kind of realize that this is an important thing to be able to do, the next question is, well, how do you, how do you come up with this vector, right? How do you, how do you find it? And you can, you can play around a little bit and you can say, well, it's, you know, if n is equal to, say, a, b, c, uh, well, then you would need to have, well, you want these two dot products to be zero. So you need a, v, 1 plus b, v, 2 plus c, v, 3 to be zero, a, w, 1 plus b, w2 plus c, w3 to be zero. And so what you end up with here is sort of a pair of, of linear equations. And those of you who are doing linear algebra at the same time, or you've already done linear algebra, um, you know how to deal with this, right? Um, or you're going to learn how to deal with it if you're earlier on in that course. Um, there are ways, there are techniques for solving a system of equations like this. And you can play around with it. And, and it turns out that the solution to this pair of equations, it's not uniquely defined. Um, it's only defined up to sort of like a scalar multiple. But you play around and you work through the details and you realize that you can choose the scalar to kind of get this to work out as nice as possible. And it turns out that as nice as possible in this scenario is still not that nice. Here's what the normal vector or the cross product, which we're going to call the cross product. This is what it ends up looking like, okay? Um, it looks like this. V2 times W3 minus V3 times W2 in the first spot. So notice in spot number one, we have the two and three components. In spot number two, we're going to have the, th the three and the one components. There is a pattern to this. And in spot number three, we get the one and the two components. So V1, W2, minus V2, W1, okay? Um, so this is, you know, this sort of falls out as a solution to this pair of equations. You work through the details and you figure it out. And I'm not, it's, they're not pleasant details, so I'm not going to go through them. But um, you can try them yourself if you want. You can play around and you can see that this does indeed work. Um, that falls out. You can also, of course, you can now confirm, if you want, that if you take the dot product of this vector, with either V or W, it does do the job it's supposed to do. If I dot it with, let's say, um, you know, so let's see, you know, let's just confirm. I'll do it for V, right? If I do N dotted with V, notice that what I'm going to get, I, so the first two get multiplied by V1, so I get V1, V2, W3, minus V1, V, oops, sorry, V3. V3, W2, right? And then the next one gets multiplied by V2. So I get plus uh, V2, uh, V3, W1, minus V2, V1, W3. And then the last one gets multiplied by V3. So I get V3, V1, W2 minus V3, V2, W1, All right? And so now you kind of, you go through and you notice, okay, uh, V1, V2, W3, V1, V2, W3, those cancel, All right? Um, V1, V3, W2, V3, V1, W2, All right? Those cancel, All right? And then, V2, V3, W1, V3, V2, W1, um, those cancel. 
And if you do it with w, you find that you get the exact same thing. Um, so this, this vector that we ended up with here at the end, um, the notation for this, we write this as uh, v cross w, and we call this the cross product. Okay, and so the main use of the cross product, and we're going to see that it turns out there are actually some other sort of interesting, cool applications of the cross product. Um, turns out to be useful for a few things, but the primary use of this cross product is constructing this vector that is orthogonal to a given pair of vectors. Um, that's the main reason that we're going to want it, but we're going to see that there are a couple of added perks that come along the way.